there's just one thing that I like to say in conclusion. That is, we are a small organization in our country, but whatever we can do, we shall do to tell the truth to the working class of Britain, Europe, and America, and all over the world. And what you can be certain of is our absolute solidarity with you. Whatever the cost to us, we will stand with the Libyan people in the hour of their need. It's impossible for the government to extract themselves easily from this, unfortunately. Apart from the cost of human life and obviously the, the massive financial cost, what has this done for Britain's image on the international stage, would you say? Well, let's not skip over the financial cost because 18 billion, 18 billion pounds sterling in the last 10 years is what's been spent. And the British government is asking people here to take pay cuts to, to, to say if you work in civic life, you won't have any pensions. So that's unacceptable. But whatever we can do, we shall do to tell the truth to the working class of Britain, Europe and America and all over the world. But as for Britain's world view, the government consecutively, consecutive governments still refuse to accept that their actions in Afghanistan and in Iraq and around the world affect how people see us. And yet 7-7, the bombings here in London, the, the, the bombers said it was a direct response to the murders in Afghanistan. So of course Britain now is known as a terror state. And frankly our government should be known as that. Tell the truth to the working class of Britain, Europe and America and all over the world. Well, the events here have literally just in the last five minutes wound down and the protesters are now making their way and they're marching to number 10 Downing Street to take their protest to the Prime Minister. Um, but before uh, that, just moments ago, the square was full of protesters, old and young, um, showing that the anti-war sentiment in the British public's imagination and, and mindset is still very much at the forefront. And there are about 2,000 people gathered or so on the square here and the event was really uh, given a, uh, a catalyst in the middle about an hour or so ago following the surprise appearance of uh, Julian Assange. She addressed the crowd ahead of his um, extradition appeal trial later this month here in London. Tell the truth to the working class of Britain. I mean, Tony Blair wanted to stay on a bit longer. He was forced to answer at least at the, at the uh, Kelly inquiry. Um, nothing came of it yet, but we don't know that in the future uh, The Hague may, may be recalling some of our politicians. So the people here are, are reflecting an awakening in the British public. We will not have more of our money going into Afghanistan. We don't want it, and we certainly don't want the, uh, the government to make moves on Iran. And this Conservative government is making those sounds. Lauren Booth, that's all we've got time for, but thanks very much. Tell the truth to the working class of Britain, Europe. And a poll last week by ITV, a main, uh, one of the main British broadcasters, uh, showed that over 70% of the British public thought that this war was unwinnable. And Tell the truth to the working class. We want your money. We're the children of the CIA. We want